welcome everybody. So um, this meeting is really meant to be very informal, um, just to talk about um, resident and student leadership opportunities, um, get some tips and tricks, um, share some share some ideas, and maybe talk about you know why a why a student or a resident would want to join um, and some of the membership opportunities that are available to them. So. Um, just some real brief introductions um, of the of folks on here. Um, so I'm Bill Plank. I'm the Assistant Executive Director um, with MAFP. Um, so Kathy and I are in the office all day, every day, and um, here for any needs that uh, any of our residents or students may have. We have Ashley Bentley, who is our Manager of Workforce Development and Student Initiatives at AAFP. I hope I got that right. Uh, and Dr. Noah Brown um, with Mercy Family. <laughs> Pardon me, Mercy Family Medicine Residency. Um, Dr. Brown is a former MAFP student board member and uh, AAFP student board member candidate. So um, ran for both of those ones successfully, and then um, some some good lessons learned that he can share with us. Um, and then Dr. John Hafner, uh, former MAFP student and resident uh, board member, and then an AAFP student board member, um, and he is now a practicing physician in the St. Louis area for SSM Health. So. Like I said, the, the purpose of this meeting is really to talk about leadership opportunities with MAFP and AAFP um, and really kind of discuss the election of student and resident alternate directors at National Conference, which is coming up at the end of July. Um, one of my favorite AAFP meetings, I have to say, every year. Um, so I want to kick it off. Um, again, keep in mind that we're, we're recording this, and so some of this is to capture some ideas and um, just some um, some some uh, you know some stuff that we can use later. So uh, as nonprofits, MAFP and AAFP have boards of directors. Um, those boards are active members that really provide strategic direction to these organizations. Um, the staff, or uh, you know myself, Ashley, Kathy, et cetera, are tasked with carrying out that vision and the strategic direction that the board sets. Um, it's really the responsibility of the board members to represent the membership. Um, they're elected by the membership and to provide really that visionary leadership for the benefit of the entire organization. So, um, you know, when we talk about leadership positions, um, being on the board is, is huge. It's vital to nonprofit organizations like us. Um, it's also great for um, your career for a lot of different reasons, and, and we'll get into that. Um, I don't want to get super deep into the structure of each of our organizations, but I do want to just kind of talk about how large the different boards are and kind of the makeup. So any students or residents that are interested in running kind of knows what the road in front of them may look like. Um, I see Dr. Schaefer on. Dr. Schaefer has, has gone through many of these pathways. Um, and so it, you know, view this step as, um, you know, running for an alternate director for resident or student. It really is the, is the first step on a, on a hopefully long and winding road through um, nonprofit work. So um, our MAFP board meets three times per year. So it's not a huge time commitment. Time commitment once is um, an advocacy day in February in Jefferson City. Um, we have a virtual meeting in June um, and then an annual fall conference in November. Um, in between that, we have an executive commission that meets. Um, that's going to be your board chair, your president, president elect, vice president, secretary, treasurer. So when they have those special names as officers or executive commission, they do meet more frequently and handle um, just some of those things that bubble up in between the meetings. Our board, MAFP, um, has a maximum of 35 voting directors by our bylaws. So those are 22 uh, directors from 10 districts around the state. Uh, St. Louis and Kansas City region each get two directors because we have so many members in those areas. There are four at-large members that can come from anywhere. We have two AAFP Congress of Delegates members, um, and then we have two residents and students. So. In addition to those voting directors, we also have alternates. So an alternate steps in when the voting director is not there. Um, so each district, each of the AAFP delegates, they all have alternates. So do our residents and students. And that is the position at national conference that you would be running for. So um, you don't, uh, don't think that you have to come in right away and know everything about MAFP. Um, a lot of what you would be doing is coming in to learn about the process of nonprofit board governance, learn about MAFP and AAFP. Um, but if that respective director is absent, then you do have full voting rights. 
Um, I should say that the resident um, and student alternate directors are elected by your peers at um, at the Missouri reception, Missouri reception held during national conference. You'll serve one year as an alternate, and then you become the full director automatically, um, unless you choose not to continue in medical school or residency for some reason, then we'd have to cross that bridge, I guess, when we got to it. Um, you do need to maintain your, um, your student and resident um, director or your student resident status while you are a director. So, um, you, for instance, you could not run as an alternate director as an MS4 um, if you're going to be going into residency next year because it's really hard to be a student board member when you're a resident. Same thing with a resident. Um, really shouldn't run as an alternate director when you're a PGY3. Hopefully you'll be employed the next year um, and <laughs> be a practicing physician so we don't necessarily want you as a um, as a resident director. Um, so that's really quick, just what I wanted to go through for the MAFP, um, I guess, formation. Ashley, do you wanna discuss kind of what AAFP looks like and maybe some leadership opportunities available? Yeah, that would be great. Hi everyone, my name is Ashley Bentley. I am on staff at the AAFP. I work in our medical education division and I manage resident and student initiatives. Um, and workforce development. So I get the opportunity to work with all residents and students that step into one of these national positions and just wanted to make you aware of some of the opportunities. And I'm showing you right now our website. You can get to this page by going to aafp.org slash get involved. And um, it's immediately structured here by student opportunities and resident opportunities. And then we have some kind of buckets that I wanted to show you. Um, our timeline for um, elections and appointments for this year, um, our first batch of, uh, of selections will be at national conference, people running to be elected at the resident and student congresses. And then we have a couple rounds of deadlines, um, one in August and one in September for positions that are appointed by a committee. So it's all coming up here pretty quick if you're interested in a leadership opportunity. Um, those positions that are elected at national conference or have the August deadline, they, um, they are times such that they start this calendar year. So depending on the position sometime this summer or fall, and then the positions for that September deadline, all our calendar year, um, January 1, starting the following year. So that's why the, the slightly earlier deadlines and uh, slightly later deadlines. I'll show you in a few categories um, and we'll just look at students, but the residents uh, mirror this. So the first batch of opportunities we have are elected national opportunities. Um, this is a voting member on the AFP board of directors. Um, there's also an opportunity to serve as the chair of national conference. We have a student chair and a resident chair. Uh, those chair positions are, are pretty cool. I think Bill described board board roles pretty well. So um, the AFP board uh, kind of mirrors uh, the Missouri board, different structure and um, a little bit different scope. But we've got some former AFP board members here who can elaborate on their experiences for you. So I won't I won't elaborate on the um, specifics. But the student chair of national conference role. Um, is somebody who helps plan national conference and really bring uh, that resident or student voice to shape um, the unique features of that year's conference. And then the other really cool thing they do is they are they serve as speaker for the resident congress or the student congress. So I get to use some parliamentary procedure and get to move that body through business sessions, making decisions about resolutions and electing the next year's leaders. So um, that's kind of a fun role. And then we have delegates to the AAFP Congress of Delegates. So similarly to how Bill described there are two delegates in the Missouri board that go to the AFP Congress of Delegates to represent Missouri. Uh, there are also two delegate seats uh, and two alternate delegate seats at the AAFP Congress of Delegates to bring a student voice. And similarly, two, al two delegates and two alternates to bring a resident voice. So those positions are like, they're kind of like a 15 month position. You get elected in as the alternate. And that first uh, fall, you would go to AFP Congress of Delegates as the alternate, you and somebody else, so two um, together. And then after Congress of Delegates, the previous delegates roll off and you become the delegate and serve throughout the year and then um, get to uh, bookend your leadership uh, role at the following year's Congress of Delegates as the delegate bringing on the new alternates. Um, you also, with, and with all of those positions, those elected national positions, you serve on the AAFP Commission on Education as a voting member. So those, those are kind of exciting because you get to see some of the policy making and then some of the governance process that happens you know, after resolutions are adopted. Where do they go in the organization and how do the commissions advise the board on action? So that's the next body of um, opportunities are appoint commission appointments. And I'll click on this one just to 
show you a little bit here, but you can navigate this. Um, we have six commissions that appoint residents and students, um, actually seven. So the Commission on Education, which I mentioned earlier, uh, that is made up of 10 resident students who are elected into other national positions. So the student resident board member, student resident chair of national conference, delegates, et cetera. Um, and then the rest of the commissions that we have take one resident and one student. So all these commissions have a resident and student voice. The Commission on Education has an especially strong resident student voice because of the scope of their work, making sure that the AFP pays a lot of attention to um, learner perspectives as we design policy around education. So those commissions are continuing professional development that works on um, what happens with physician learning after you graduate residency. So everything beyond um, continuing medical education as well as other spheres of professional development for our members. Um, Commission on Federal and State Policy, which does governmental advocacy work. Commission on Health of the Public and Science, which does clinical guidelines and looks at all of the kind of public health work that the AFP does. Commission on Membership and Member Services does a lot of governance work and thinks about how, as an organization, we're serving our members, oversees some of our big meetings. Um, the Commission on Equality and Practice deals with um, exactly what it sounds like, practice, um, and, and looks at how practices are functioning and what support our members need to have the, the best practices they can. And then the Commission on Education, which I mentioned, which has a scope of medical education, so student and resident issues. Those commission appointments are one-year terms, um, calendar year, J January 1 to December 31st. And then the next kind of group is FMIG work leaders. This, these are student-only positions. So um, you can be elected to serve as the national coordinator of the Family Medicine Interest Group Network. You don't have to be a previous national FMIG leader. You just have to have some FMIG experience at your school to qualify for that role. Um, I should mention all the roles that I've talked about at the beginning do have some prerequisites. So to serve as the student member of the board or a student chair at a national conference, you do have to have another national position that you've already served in for the AAFP. Um, you don't to be a student delegate or a resident delegate. That position you can come in um, without any AFP national experience. Um, but the FMIG network, we do require that you've had some um, FMIG related or ACOFP student chapter related experience at your school. Um, and the national coordinator is an elected position. So that person runs a national conference and serves kind of more of an academic year cycle. And then the regional coordinators who all are responsible for, with connecting with FMIGs in a certain region across the country. Um, and then they function as a team together. Um, so they serve their regions and then they work together um, as a team. Um, those positions are calendar year positions. So there's a little bit of a staggered cycle there so that the national coordinator can always bring some continuity and then, um, and then can kind of pick it up. Those are really exciting positions. The FMIG Network National Coordinator um, also gets to serve on the Commission on Education. So gets to see, again, some of that um, behind the scenes work because our FMIG Network reports up through the Commission on Education. So they're there as a representative. And then that network, I'm gonna jump down to a couple positions that are under the um, representatives and liaisons to other organizations. That FMIG Network includes two liaisons a liaison to the Student National Medical Association and a liaison to the Latino Medical Student Association. Those are both medical student organizations that have um, kind of specialty interest group structures. So the work that we do through the FMIG network to spread information about exploring family medicine careers, we also do that with those um, two organizations. And so we have liaisons there. So that FMIG network ends up being a, a team of nine students. They meet monthly, they plan workshops for national conference, they have a lot of fun together. Um, and really get to get people excited about family medicine. Then in the next body of, um, we have two more categories. So the next group is representatives and liaisons to other organs. I mentioned SNMA and LMSA. We also have delegates to the AMA, the American Medical Association. We have two delegates to the AMA's medical student section, which is um, really just like our student, National Student Congress, and two delegates to the AMA resident fellow section, which is a lot like our um, AFP resident Congress. And so we support them to go there. And the really the unique part about those roles is you're not, you're not in the family medicine house anymore. You're in the house of medicine representing family medicine. So you get to be involved in some discussions um, a more broad that are more broad and really talk about family medicine's role. And then we have a board member um, on the FAMED PAC board of directors. So this is a political organization. That's a two-year term. They take one resident or student on that board. So they take applicants from both residents and students and every two years they select one person to fill that seat. And then we have um, board members of the Society of Teachers of Family Medicine, which is 
a sister organization to the AAFP. We're not directly affiliated, but we're in the family of family medicine. That organization focuses on people who teach family medicine. It's residency and um, undergraduate medical education focused. Really is a great organization to get involved with if you're interested in an academic career. And it's a full voting member of that organization's board of directors, one year term. And the AAP Foundation board of directors is really similar. That's a philanthropic organization. Um, and same thing, it's a board of trustees and, and we get to serve as a full voting member. Both of those bodies use the AAFP student and resident congresses to elect because they want to have somebody who's who's elected by their peers, who's chosen by a group of their peers. So even though those are external organizations, um, our, our foundation is obviously affiliated, but still its own running organization with its own board, they use our student congress for their elections. And then the last group I'm gonna talk about here is AFP advisory and program boards. Um, these are really great positions if you're just, um, if you're looking for something that doesn't have as maybe as big of a time commitment or that has a really kind of a really specific or narrow scope, these advisory groups, some of them don't even meet in person throughout the year. And so sometimes these can be entirely virtual opportunities. Um, the Center for Global Health Initiatives is an AAFP entity uh, housed within our organization, focuses on global health work, plans an annual um, conference or pre-conference workshop on global health. Um, and that's a two-year position. They take one resident, one student. Um, our National Research Network is a one-year position, um, takes one resident, one student. It's a um, practice-based research network, so really exciting real-world prim primary care research happening there. It's a great experience. Um, American Family Physician, top-notch clinical journal, um, and an opportunity to work with their editorial board. Their editor selects who they want, so some years they take one, some years they take two. It's all up to the, the people who serve on that border. Um, serve at the pleasure of the editor. So they uh, they do the selection there. And then the Annals of Family Medicine editorial board um, actually leans on the AEFP um, selection committee to make a one resident, one student appointment to their um, advisory board each year. So I know that was a lot and I just threw it at you, but I didn't want to take up too much of your time this evening with descriptions. I wanted to make sure we really got to hear from you. So I'll stop. Happy to take any questions and I'm excited to hear how some of these experienced leaders um, would provide some color commentary to those opportunities. Thank you, Ashley. Um, and if you could just maybe drop, uh, man, you changed my Zoom around. If you could maybe just mm -hmm. drop your uh, drop a link to that web page um, that you have pulled up into the chat, so anybody interested can can grab that. That would be helpful. Um, yeah, absolutely right. So, um, Dr. Brown, Dr. Hafner, Dr. Schaefer. Um, everybody wants to hear from you, not so much Ashley and me. Um, and I'd open it up first. Does anybody, if anybody has any questions, just go ahead and drop them in the chat. Um, and while you're coming up with those questions, um, I'll ask Dr. Brown. Um, I guess give us some insight on why you decided to run for the board as a student and maybe how that helped in your journey to becoming a resident. Um, are you talking about the MAFP board? Yes. Yeah. Um, so I actually, um, this was back, oh man, like four years ago, I um, got originally got involved with the board and I actually had a fellow student of mine at UMKC um, encourage me to run for the position, uh, Morgan uh, Murray, who she's, I'm not actually sure, I think she's out practicing in Kansas City area, now she's out of residency. Um, but she actually, she was the current alternate director and she encouraged me to run for it. Um, and, you know, I... I can't thank her enough for, for encouraging me to do that because, you know, the more that I looked into the Missouri Academy, the more that I just fell in love with the field. I was um, unique in my, my program was that I kind of had an I had a pretty good idea of what I wanted to do when I came into my medical program. Um, a lot of my classmates didn't just because of the nature of, of our program at UMKC, but um, the family medicine was always kind of a, an interest of mine. And so when I heard about this opportunity to run for the Missouri Academy board, you know, I'd I was more than happy to jump on it. I remember I was actually home on summer break and I am um, tra traversed back to Kansas city um, for the um, no, national conference in order to um, be present there for the election for the position. But um, you know, the big things that I took away from, you know, when I was originally looking at it and that were just reinforced as I was on the board was that the Missouri Academy and, and I would, you know, even further extend it to the American Academy, they truly care about, your input as even as a student, um, you know, a lot of times in the hospitals, I think a lot of us have the experiences that, you know, our, our input is not always um, um, 
wanted at all times, um, but certainly the MAFP um, values it and they put a lot of value on it. I remember when I was serving, you know, I was um, the, the, the full director during the beginning, uh, kind of towards the beginning of the COVID pandemic, when we were all kind of online and the receptiveness that Kathy and Bill had to any ideas that I or um, any ideas that I brought from um, the, the FMIG leadership across the state, um, they were just so receptive to and they made it their their um, passion to um, to get those programs going. And so the you know, so the, and that was something that I got a little bit of an idea of when I was just starting to consider running. And then that was just further, you know, proven to me throughout uh, my time on the Missouri board. Um, but that so the big so that was the big thing for me, the support of students that the MAFP provides is, is unparalleled, in my opinion. You know, I I had colleagues that were on, you know, involved with SMA, LMSA, AMA um, and all the various specialty interest groups and things. And there was no one came even close to the support that the, that a state organization provides for students um, and even in a national organization. And so that was just really struck me when I was originally looking at them. And so that was ultimately what what encouraged me to um, to run for the student position. Very good, Doctor Hay Doctor Hafner. I'm going to ask you kind of the the same question. So um, I guess reflect on on your journey um, with MAFP and AAFP, um, and any any major takeaways or, or tips that you would give to anybody looking to run or get involved. Yes, thank you for the question, Bill. Um, so I will say my journey started with, um, or similar to Noah's, where I knew kind of I wanted to go into family medicine. Um, I wanted to do primary care kind of very early on in my medical career. And uh, so first, my first portion of my first year, I was really figuring out, all right, who are the mentors that uh, I want to identify and the different primary care specialties so I can learn more in depth about uh, each different specialty. Very quickly, I found a couple mentors at my medical school uh, in family medicine. Uh, not only did they show me kind of that direct patient care aspect of family medicine, but they opened me up to uh, the world of organized medicine, uh, specifically encouraging me uh, to get involved with uh, both the MAFP and the AAFP. Um, really, before I started in medical school, I didn't have a, a sense of what uh, professional organizations within uh, medicine did. Uh, so I went in very blind uh, during my first application to uh, the MAFP alternate student alternate position because uh, I did not have any other um, students that I knew that had served in that role. And so uh, that mentor encouraged me to submit the application, made sure that I was um, I had somebody to at least ask questions to, uh, and there was a resident in St. Louis uh, that was serving as a resident board member at that time. And so uh, from there, I uh, just kind of fell in love, as Noah was talking about, fell in love with the family of family medicine, uh, the support that all the practicing physicians, as well as the, the two residents on the board, uh, showed me as an alternate and then as a student delegate, uh, really just helped me to uh, sink my teeth into understanding all of the, the various factors that go into us uh, practicing medicine. So not only uh, the medical knowledge and understanding all the guidelines that go into taking care of patients, but then understanding how do our medical structures in, in terms of insurance, hospital structures, uh, and how do those uh, arrangements uh, and how does the um, negotiations happen between each of those different levels of medicine or levels of healthcare uh, how do those conversations impact us as practicing physicians, as medical students, and as residents? And then how do they also impact our patients? Uh, and being able to be an advocate uh, for each of those different groups uh, was something that was really powerful for me. Uh, and it's what pushed me to continue to go uh, from working with uh, the MAFP board to then getting involved with the AAFP uh, and serving in uh, various different leadership roles uh, at that level as well. Thank you, Bill. Very good. Um, you know, you, you'd think three years into Zoom, I learned that I have to unmute myself before I start talking, but we, we all still seem to make that mistake. So um, 
I wanted to ask Dr. Schaefer, since since we have him on here as well, um, Dr. Schaefer is, a, is an experienced and an accomplished board member, not only with MAFP and AAFP, but, but some other boards. So um, I'd kind of ask you for the same, give us a, a reflection about board service in general um, and any, you know, wisdom that you'd like to give to anybody who might be on the fence about, should I run, should I not, what are the pros and cons? Um, because, you know, there, there are pros and cons, right? <laughs> well, there are pros and cons, but uh, the cons become pros, I think, after a while, I think, is what I'm trying to get at. So, first of all, you know, and everybody talking about, you know, their student experience and stuff as well, too, you know, with John. Um, I wasn't as involved, as involved at my medical school as a student. Um, I got involved as a resident. And, um, you know, of course, my first recollection going back to the first time I went to a Missouri Academy meeting uh, was in the summer, you know, I was at the lake and a bunch of residents went down and shared a place. And I just kind of fell in love with the organization and the fun that was there and the mentorship that I could find among the people that were out in practice because I saw myself as a real practice family physician. Uh, and I really found a lot of people that I knew that were be great mentors. And, um, and then I, I think my third year of residency, this is in 95, went to the national conference and, um, you know, I was like, wow, look at this conference. You know, I, again, I didn't know about it as a student didn't go as a student. Um, wish I sure wish I would have done that. Um, look, you know, looking back on that. And I guess that's going to, at the end of this, I'm going to tell you, that's what I'm saying. When you say, should you run? Like I said, if I had to do something different, I would have done that, but I didn't do that. Just, I just wasn't as involved, you know, as a student, basically. Um, but again, I've been now at the national conference every year since 1995. Uh, so a long time thing of going to that. Uh, and it is really, it is the most exciting best meeting that the CAP opinion really does run even better than the national call that are learning, learning about national conference that may have never been there. You will experience that when you go to that. And so I think, you know, going there and being part of that, uh, you really, you really understand that there's really a family of family medicine and you really see a lot of people like yourself, you know, students and residence wise uh, that are around that are just, you know, as happy or maybe even happier than you, but you become happy like that as well too, you know, when you go to this meeting. And um, so again, uh, you know, again, I wasn't necessarily as involved and then I got involved in Missouri Academy not not as much, you know, again, student resident stuff, but then I got on the education commission and I, you know, was on the education commission since the late nineties, kind of helping, uh, you know, plan our two meetings a year that we did for educational conferences really became, you know, real interested in that, you know, got as a delegate then, you know, to the Missouri Academy as well too. Um, continue to work through that, you know, throughout my career, um, you know, somewhere in there, I was kind of doubling up on stuff even too. And that's why I said, when you kind of fall in love with a position like this, uh, again, you're, you're, everybody's just kind of thinking about whether I should do it or not. Well, I was doubling up for a period of time where I was actually, um, I got on the, uh, the program directors association board. So that's the AFMRD board and was on that board for seven years and served as this president as well too. So there was a time where I was actually, um, uh, president of the Missouri Academy, and I was president-elect of AFMRD at the same time, actually. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of busyness, actually, during that period of time, but it's just the way it worked out for my career, and, uh, you know, continue to go on through that. So, you know, over those bunch of years, I've, you know, really tried to work on encouraging, you know, students to apply uh, for especially the Missouri Academy positions, you know, that are elected at this. Uh, we've tried to work on a lot of different things, created a lot of different ways to make it, um, you know, very beneficial on, you know, the student, as Noah talked a little bit about, you know, how, how we really respect what students residents have to say. Uh, we really want them there. We really want them to be active and involved. We give them actually a few items to complete and some things like that as well, too, just to make, you know, some guidelines of what we want them to do. Uh, but for the most part, it's really just kind of getting elected. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, if you come to the Missouri Academy meeting, you know, at the, at the national conference, you know, that's where the election has occurred. You're actually elected by uh, your peers. So each, uh, if you're a student, each, uh, medical school that has a representative president will uh, vote. And if you're a resident then each residency has ones by the people that are actually there. So it's not like everybody is there. So if, you know, 20 people show up from UMKC, they don't all get 20 votes. They really get just one vote. Uh, so really it's, it's, it's one, you know, per residency or one for a medical student. And so that's how that election actually works. Um, so as you heard from, you know, from John and Noah both, you know, that that was kind of one of their first things that they did, you know, as, as students was get on the MAFP board. And so that's a really starting place. 
Uh, second part of that is, you know, of course, with uh, you know Ashley on here talking a lot about the national stuff. You know, of course, she gives a lot of information because there's lots of different positions. But you know, we're talking about lots of great places. We want to get students and residents involved, no matter what level. And I. There's lots of great national positions there to run as well, too. And again, I'm always trying to find a student that, you know, has a little bit of advocacy maybe to them that they want to get involved. They want to actually change stuff potentially or just see how stuff runs and then look at things for in the future for them as well, too. And so there's so many different positions. And that's where I think, you know, going back to, you know, Noah and, uh, you know, uh, knows this. And so and so does uh, John about some of those other different positions that are available. But even if it is, you know, things like, uh, you know, being a co-convener for the national conference, being, you know, get elected as one of the delegates, things like that, there's lots and lots of positions to be done. And, you know, here, in, you know, we're. I think Dr. Schaefer is frozen. So again, I oh. <laughs> for people to. To get involved, basically, I guess is what I'm getting at, you know, for, you know, right here in our own backyard. So, again, I'm going to sh shut up a little bit. I mean, I'm currently, of course, on the board of directors now and running for the president-elect this year in the fall. Um, but, again, I've kind of got a long career of having lots of different th these different things. And I think a lot of this stuff builds on each other because what ends up happening is, is that so – um, just so you understand. So once people kind of run, uh, even if you don't get elected, your name is still out there. And what I'm getting at that is there's lots of other positions and things that are available that show up. So, for instance, like when I was on the AFMRD board, uh, a lot of times uh, an organization would come to us and say, you know, uh, we need a student or resident to be on this commission or this committee or things like that of another alternate organization, maybe not an AFP organization, but something else. And they need a list of names. Well, guess who percolates up to the top? It's people that we know that maybe have ran for a position or things like that basically in the past. And that's one of the big things I think about this is, is that really you just kind of get known and things like that and whether you're elected or not. And one quick thing, and no, you know, Noah may talk about this a little bit as well too, but I will also encourage people, you know, don't, don't have the fear of, because it is an election, don't have that fear to block you from actually running. So just, again, my experience, you know, I guess I go back to uh, not quite as much as uh, Abe Lincoln, you know, they talk about Abe Lincoln and how many times I think he was not elected like 40 sometimes or something like that before he was ever actually elected as, you know, something actually um, in his career. Uh, mine's not quite that bad. But I will tell you that when I first ran for the AFMRD board, for instance, um, I was not elected the first year. And I had a, an astute wisdom, uh, older person that I really respected that came up to me afterwards and said, you know, you need to run again next year. And I thought, oh, you know, I was just feeling dejected and everything else at the time. And I was thinking, oh, I don't really want to go through that again. But I did, and I was elected the next year. And again, I went on to serve on that board for seven years and served as its president. Um, the first year I ran for uh, AFP board, actually, I was not elected as well. Uh, and then I waited a couple of years before I did run again, actually. And then I was eventually elected to the AFP board. So so don't worry about it as much about that whole election thing. Um, you know, even if you're not elected, don't worry about it. There's sometimes there's other positions for you to be in. There's other things to actually do you know, do or be elected potentially in the future as well, too. But I think it gets your feet wet more than anything else. So I, I really encourage you to, you know, to put your name down on something and run for something for sure. So I'll shut up there. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Schaefer. So um, you kind of led me into exactly what my next question was going to be a little bit of a lightning round. Um, and the one tip I'll, I'll ask all three of you uh, in, in successive order. The one tip that you would give to a resident or a student who's running who hasn't ran before the eye opening thing of, man, I wish I knew this one big thing before I started. Dr. Hafner, we'll start with you. Uh, well, so I think going back to like how I got started, and I think this is how we all got started in learning about these positions is find that mentor that uh, knows the organization or knows the positions that are available. Uh, and I will let you know that I'm happy to, for anybody on the call, uh, like spend more time talking with you and helping you through the process if you uh, need that. But I think more than anything, when you're first starting out, having a mentor that can uh, guide you through the process and really um, give you uh, a good footing to, to jump off in, uh, as Dr. Schaefer was alluding to, is like, once you put your name out there, uh, other people are going to uh, see you as a leader. Other people are going to recognize uh, that potential, even if you don't get uh, picked for a position or elected for the specific elected positions. Uh, so I'd say find that mentor early and uh, follow them uh, through the through your career. Very good. Dr. Brown, same question to you. Yeah, Dr. Schaefer took a lot of mine, but Dr. Schaefer is my mentor for anybody who would <laughs> love the call. 
Um, so we've, we've had these discussions before, but, you know, kind of, um, you know, similar to John's, you know, in terms of, you know, utilizing those around you. Um, so, you know, finding your mentor, utilizing the MAFP, utilizing the staff there, the other physicians on there, because, you know, there's a good chance, you know, you're going to find people there that are going, that have some experience that you can kind of pick their brains about. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough to have, have at my institution, um, someone like Dr. Schaefer, who has this very immense experience in running for these positions and who, you know, when I ran for um, the position I ran for for national election, um, you know, he was actively a member on the AAFP board. And so, you know, I was very fortunate to have that. And so, you know, just, you know, I mean, so utilize your resources, you know, whether it be somebody at your institution, somebody within the MAFP, you run into somebody at a conference you're at and you're talking to them, you know, and you're like, hey, they, they're on the board for SDFM, you know, and that's something that interests me, you know, how can I get involved with that? Just so don't be afraid to, you know, pick the brains of those around you and utilize your resources um, in any way that you can. Very good. Dr. Schaefer, do you have anything that can top with those two wonderful gentlemen said? No, it's basically the same thing they just said, but I'll just say that the thing that I would, like I said, I would have known now is that Again, as a, if I'd known this as a student, the things that I known or as a resident, I mean, earlier on, I definitely would have ran sooner is what I'm trying to get at. So what I'm saying is, is that the sooner you run, I mean, again, don't worry about the election. Don't worry about whatever. You can have people around. You can ask about things, things like that. Um, I think that, uh, you know, again, there's lots of different positions to be in. I think one of the things that, you know, I learned from last year when, uh, you know, or well, it's been it's been two years ago, Noah already. But uh, when Noah ran, was that you know when Noah first put his stuff in to begin with? Uh, I think there was only two people running for that position, and then by the time that like the actual like thing was like because people can put their names in up to the very end, there ended up being like seven or eight. Like all of a sudden, and it's like all of a sudden it's like what the heck? How did it go from two to seven or eight? You know, basically running. I mean, it's pretty tough to get elected when that many people are running. Whereas there was lots of other positions that still only had you know one or two people running. Anna, basically and maybe ashley might be able to just to be one to not advise him like any differently other than just try your hardest you know basically very good um does anybody else have any other questions or ashley is there anything else you'd like to add to what they've shared oh okay michaela has a great question she said how would you all be able to talk more about the process of applying and what occurs at elections for the MAFP alternate delegate? Are we expected to have a platform or anything else prepared? I can handle the nuts and bolts of that. Um, you, you don't have to have a, a big platform, a long campaign speech or anything like that. Um, there, there is a process of basically saying that you want to, <laughs> that you're interested in and you, you kind of stick up your hand. We, we do need to see a CV, um, but that's really about it. Michaela, um, I think either Dr. Brown or Dr. Hafner um, could probably speak more about how to run a successful campaign than just the nuts and bolts of the paperwork that we need. So I'll, I'll kick it over to one of them on how to actually get elected and what their expectations are, um, you know, from the people that actually vote. Yeah, so I'm actually running for the resident um, uh, director position this year. And so I kind of am in the same boat, you know, what do I what do I prepare for? So I, um, you know, when I was running for the student director, it's actually funny. So like I said, I was at home, I was a, um, a second year in, in my program. And um, or in the summer, my second between uh, before my third year. And so I was at home and I was on summer break. I was, you know, I was just started, you know, my program and I had no idea what to expect. So I, I went there and, you know, Morgan had told me, oh, it's just fine. You're just going to show up, you know, there's uh, some snacks and stuff you can have. And, and then you just get to talk to people. That's actually where I first met Dr. Schaefer. And, and so, you know, then you just kind of do that. Well, it ended up somebody actually was running against me. And so I had to give an impromptu speech. Um, so that was fun. I don't, I don't recommend um, not coming prepared without a speech. So just, and it doesn't have to be something like super long, like it can just be something, you know, introducing yourself. Um, so kind of when, you know, when I was giving that speech, you know, essentially how I did it was I just introduced myself, you know, of course, you know, what was interesting, you know, why, why I'm interested in family medicine and why I felt that I could be a, a valuable asset for the students across the state and being their voice on the board and how, you know, so I kind of outlined for them how I was going to plan to get their voice and, 
and how I was going to um, to be that uh, spokesperson for them. And so showing that passion um, that I have for family medicine and showing that passion that I had um, to be their their voice for the board. Um, you know, I I don't know. I felt like that that was that that's that was how I approached it. You know, and I, I got elected. So I guess it, it worked a little bit. But um, so that's kind of how I approached it. And that's probably a similar aspect of how I'll approach um, this year's election for it to be the alternate resident director. Yeah, and I would just piggyback off of that. Uh, I don't think you could emphasize enough. It's all about uh, the passion and your uh, interest in getting involved, learning more, and seeing where you can be an asset uh, to the board and to uh, your constituents, students or residents. Um, almost nobody has experience in um, being a board member or advocacy or um, sitting on uh, commissions for education or other commissions that the AAFP has when they're going into their first election. So that's uh, really not expected. Uh, just coming off with why you think you would be a good candidate uh, to represent students or residents. Um, and that could be because of uh, your background and your life experiences. It could be because of your passion. Uh, just figure out how you want to frame yourself uh, to talk about that uh, lived experience that you've had. I will say, um, when I was preparing as a student, uh, I did come prepared with a speech because uh, the resident that told me um, said that that was like the one big thing that I had to do uh, besides submit the paperwork was write a speech. Uh, I did not run a bit against anybody that year. Um, so it felt a little uh, anticlimactic, um, the opposite of what Noah's experience was where he had the, the panic of having to give a speech. Um, but the when I ran as a resident, uh, I was I think there were two other people that uh, ran that year. And so uh, having that speech of just why you want to be involved is definitely important. I have a couple additional pieces of advice, um, probably coming from the staff perspective. And my first piece of advice is let the Missouri Academy know your interests as soon as you have even just an inkling. Um, they'll help you navigate the process. They'll help you see what's available and what's open to you. They can help you connect with past leaders. You know, do you want to talk to the person who did this last year or the person who's in the role this year so they can make some connections? And even if you're thinking about a national opportunity and not a state opportunity or both, um, the Missouri Academy can help you learn their process because each of our states are involved in the um, in supporting candidates for election or appointment. So we want to, our selection bodies really value seeing if a resident or student has been involved in their state and if so, if they've been reliable and a strong contributor. So the, the academies have a voice, the state um, and constituent academies have a voice in those elections and provide that information to the electing body or the um, or the appointing body. And then my other piece of advice is just really make sure whatever you're running for or applying for, that you are fully available and vested. So um, talk to your um, program director or talk to your medical school faculty, make sure your institution is going to support you. Make sure you're going to be able to get the time away if there's travel. Um, the hardest thing is if you get one of these roles and you can't do it, you know, you, you can't make the travel work, you feel pulled in too many directions. You feel like you're not really doing a good job in either place. Um, and that's hard for the organization as well. Um, these are important roles. These are important voices. And we want to make sure people are, are really available for them. So look at your schedule. Look at the right time for you in the process of your medical education. Uh, your education comes first. And we're always going to support that. And we're always going to support you. So if something comes up, you can just um, just make sure you communicate about that. But um, you know, we really want to see that you've planned for this and that you've done everything you can to make sure that you're fully available for these leadership positions. And we can help you navigate that as well if you need a letter or a communication. Um, we have dates of all meetings for all of the open positions available on the website. So you have those looking at the full term ahead and you can make sure that it's really something that you can commit to. Wonderful, thank you. Um, another question, any additional advice for running as a US IMG medical student? Um, I'll let anybody handle that one. I can share a little bit on this because this is probably where we see that the most at the national level. So um, our, you all probably know um, uh, medical student membership in the AAFP is open to any student from any uh, any medical school. So we have many student members who are studying at offshore medical schools, Caribbean medical schools, and many, uh, many of them are doing their clinical education right here in the U.S. even, and many are U.S. citizens. So um, we've just got a, a big diversity in our student membership. The state structure can look a little bit different, right? So if you're 
if you're doing your clinical rotations in Missouri, or if your home address, if you're from Missouri, and so your home address is in Missouri, and that's what's associated with your member record, then you're going to show up in our system as a Missouri Academy member. So that means all of those pieces that I just talked about will go where the state chapter gets a voice in your um, candidacy. Those, those will go to the Missouri chapter, whichever chapter is associated with your permanent address um, in our membership system. So think about that. Um, and I would say look for opportunities to get involved in the chapter. The leadership structures for different chapters are different, um, but if you're in Missouri, you can talk for Bill to Bill. Make sure you know, am I eligible for each of these opportunities? What does that look like for me? Um, if there's an issue with eligibility for some reason, is there something else that I can do? Um, and see if you can get involved in your state that way. But we have we have um, international students serving. Uh, one of our delegates, student delegates to the Congress of Delegates right now is at Ross University. Um, and this is something we're, we're starting to see more and more interest and we're starting to see more and more of those students get um, get elected and appointed. The, the other thing I would say is uh, try to make sure you have a letter of support from a family physician um, who's been involved in your education. So if you've got somebody on faculty or somebody you've done a clinical rotation with, um, that can go a long way as well. And that can be a little bit more challenging because the U.S. medical schools are, might be structured where the students are more easily connecting with those faculty and, and you might be, um, your, your education looks a little bit different if you're moving around for your rotation. So we understand that and, um, but looks to try to make a connection if you can with a family physician. And um, we also look strongly at letters of support from maybe other organizations you've been involved with. So we had an international student run one year who'd been really involved with SNMA and they had a letter of support with um, a physician who had worked with them on SNMA and could you know talk about their um, commitment and dedication and reliability yeah. in that leadership position. I hope that's helpful. Wonderful. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. I hope this has been informative for everybody uh, interested. Again, we will share this video with others. So um, I, I anticipate that we'll have some, some uh, individuals running for our student alternate and resident alternate positions at national conference. I'm looking forward to that. I'll be there um, running it. And I would always offer to anybody that has any questions about our board, about governance, about the, the nuts and bolts of it, what documentation is needed please reach out to us. Um, our website, mo-afp.org, is always a great resource. Um, you can always email me, bplank, at mo-afp.org, or give us a call at the office, 573-635-0830. Um, as everybody has said, Kathy and I are definitely here to uh, support our members in anything you need. Um, and Dr. Hafner has dropped his contact information into the chat as well. So thank you all very much. Um, unless anybody has any other questions, have a wonderful evening.